So I'm talking about um, timber stability and timber expansion and contraction, which is the opposite of stability. So timber is like a sponge. So when it absorbs moisture, it expands, and when it dries out, it shrinks again. But it's not just uh, in relation to water uh, or, or liquid water. So timber is also hygroscopic, and what that means is that it will absorb moisture from the atmosphere. So the atmosphere always has moisture in it. There's atmospheric humidity. Timber will absorb that and it will expand. And then when the atmosphere is dry, the timber will give out moisture and it will shrink. So it's both those two things. Now, if you think about it in terms of a window or a door, um, obviously they're, they're outside. That's, that's their job. They live outside. And outside it rains and it gets sunny and you get all extremes of... Um, temperature and moisture. So the environment for a window and door is constantly changing. And what that means is that the wood itself is constantly expanding and contracting. Shrinking, swelling, shrinking, swelling. So it's called a shrink-swell cycle. And that happens always throughout the life of the timber, throughout the life of the window and door. It's got nothing to do with how well seasoned the wood is. Um, yes, the wood does need to be seasoned, don't get me wrong, but that's it's not it's, it's a separate issue so you can have perfectly seasoned wood and it will still expand and contract in relation to atmospheric conditions so the idea of timber stability is effectively how much it moves with moisture and that's what we're going to look at a little bit further now if you have a think about how timber is made up um, timber is long fibers and um, lots of long fibers in a bunch they i kind of imagine it like a bunch of straws um, if you look up close at the end grain, if you look really close, I don't know if you can see it there, but basically you can see the ends of all the little fibres that run there. Now the important thing to know about that um, is that timber expands across those fibres but not along those fibres. Now what that means is for a piece of timber, i.e. this piece of timber here, it will expand across its width so it will expand across its width that way and also on its thickness, but the length won't change. That will stay the same. And that's really important. It's, it, it's vital actually. It becomes really, really, um, really important. Width changes, length doesn't. So we need to remember that. And the other thing is that when timber absorbs moisture, it picks moisture up from the end grain more than from the face. So if you look at that, that is like a sponge. That's the end of all those fibers of straws, if you will. So from the end, it will suck moisture up far quicker than it will from the face of timber. And again, that's been, going to become really important. Now, the amount of movement that we're talking about can be quite a lot. So you could have one or two percent of movement. Now, if you've got a piece of timber which is 100 mil wide, that means that it could grow by one or two millimeters when it gets wet. Now, and the wider the timber is, the more it will expand. So if you've got 200 millimeter wide piece of timber, well, logic says then, you know, it's going to, ex it's going to expand by two to four millimeters. Now that's a lot, that's, that's easily visu you know, visible to the eye. It's, it's a, that's quite a big movement. The other thing is that the timber species will have an effect. So different timber species will expand and contract um, it differently in relation to the moisture. Typically, softwood will expand more, um, but there's a bit more to it than that. So we're, you know that that's something for another discussion at another time. The other thing to bear in mind, particularly in terms of windows or doors, is where the window is positioned um, in the building, and what I mean by that is that you can have lots of different environments around a building. So I say, for example, typically the most exposed environment in a building is going to be the southwest face. Um, and the reason for that is because the majority of storms, rain, bad weather come in the UK come from the southwest. So when you look on the weather map, you see all those big Atlantic depressions coming up from um, South Atlantic. They go through Cornwall, they track across the UK. So the weathers are coming from the southwest. So all they get... You know, southwest face gets rain lashed. Also, think about what's south facing the sun. So, after getting rain lashed, the sun comes out, sun beats down on it, 
So on a southwest face, stuff is constantly getting soaked, it's expanding, then it gets baked, it's drying. So it's going from these extreme environments, you know, often and quite, sometimes quite quickly. And that, that has, that's a lot of stress for, for, um, for timber. If you think about the opposite to that, the opposite side, the north face of a building, then typically you think of that as the cold, sort of, you know, the, the, the inhospitable face of the building. Uh, for a window, it's ideal. That's where it wants to be. Because it's sheltered from all those southwesterly storms that are coming over, so all there, um, it, nice and sheltered, doesn't get any direct sun. So the conditions there are far more stable. They're far more conducive for a window, and you can easily notice that. And if you're going to have a look around, go and have a look around your house. Go and have a look around the windows if you've got timber windows that have been there for a little while, and you can see the differences. So southwest face, typically you'll see that they're showing signs of weathering. They're maybe starting to rot. Whereas if you go around onto a north face, chances are they'll be in better condition. Although what you might see, you might see that actually all the south facing windows have already been replaced, so they're much much newer than the north face windows. But the, the, that has a big, big effect. The other thing that has an effect is whether um, things are protected from direct rain. Because if they're getting rain lashed, then clearly that's going to make timber wet. If they're protected, it keeps them dry. So that's another obvious factor. But all those things have an effect on, um, on how the timber's moving. The other important point to think about this, and you think oh, it's just wood, you know, a bit of expansion, well, you know, a bit of glue or something like that. Timber expansion is a massively strong force. And pretty much mechanically there's nothing you can do to stop it and um, once the timber is absorbing moisture that force is incredibly strong if you put a piece of timber in concrete it will split concrete apart um, so you have to find another route around it you've got to use your head rather than using brute force you've got to do something like that so that sort of talks about the mechanics of um, you know why how timber expands and contracts and what what's going on there but How's that, more impo how's that important to um, a window or a door? So here we've got our window, simple, four bits of wood, joined at the four corners with a 90 degree joint. And that joint there, that corner joint really is the, the crux of the window. That's the bit that really counts. And, and ultimately that's the bit where if there's gonna be problems, you'll, that's where the problems will start. Now, having, have a think about this. So we've got grain running in that direction on this piece of timber, grain running in that direction on this piece of timber. So we've got grain at 90 degrees to each other. And remember what we just spoke about is that timber only expands across its width. It doesn't change length. So what we've got here with the grain running at 90 degrees to each other is that the length of that piece of timber stays the same, the width of that one is moving, expanding, and then what happens is the joint opens up like that, the rail slides over the stile, and that joint gets cracked open. So typically what you see, the little telltale signs you see, are you'll start to see a hairline gap open up at that joint there, and then the bottom of this which when it came off the bench if it was made properly would have been nice and flat and flush now as this rail expands that joint steps like that and you start to see that little step going on so that's when timber's expanding if you're looking at an internal door you'll see the opposite you'll see that and what's happening is that the rail is shrinking and the style is staying the same length and you get that step up that way so if you get down on your hands and knees and have a look at some of your internal doors you might see that so if you're anything like me once you've been aware of this you end up looking for it everywhere you notice it all the time you notice it um, you walk down the high street you'll see it a dozen times so th that's the that's the corner joint so that's how typically uh, a joint will start to break open is that differential expansion so wherever you've got joint um, wherever you've got timber timber grain direction Jointing, joining at 90 degrees, you're going to face an issue of differential rates of expansion and you're going to face an issue with the joint um, staying true. So typically what happens then is that joint, uh, a hairline crack opens up like that and then come back to what we said earlier, timber absorbs moisture through end grain far, far easier. So as soon as the hairline graph opens up, you're exposing the end grain of this piece of timber. The moisture starts to creep in there. It expands even more. 
makes the problems even worse. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle. So that's the first thing. Now, the other thing to think about is that in many cases, traditionally timber windows are painted. So they've got a, um, a paint coating on them. Now paint, or particularly paints, used to be fairly brittle, a fairly, you know, a brittle coating that is laid over the timber. Now, obviously better quality paints nowadays are designed to be flexible, but traditionally paints were pretty brittle. Now you're basically painting a brittle coating on top of a, a material which, as we've just discovered, is constantly expanding and contracting. And that brittle coating just can't cope with it. So what you typically find again is when this rail when that joint slides across each other and a hairline uh, crack opens up the paint can't cope with that movement so the paint cracks down there and again that's allowing moisture to get into that joint the other thing you'll notice um particularly with um uh, with the paint finish is that because the expansion is all across the width you'll get horizontal lines you get horizontal the the, the paint will crack horizontally Another thing which is vital in considering windows is that um, water will get in to the makings of your window, it will get into the, to the timber of the window somewhere at some point. Now obviously windows, the whole sort of purpose of their design is to keep the weather out. Um, Ultimately, as we've just seen, they get rain lashed and at some point the water is going to ingress into the timber of the window. Now it can be through the tiniest little um, uh, pinhole in the, in the paint finish, it could be through a hairline crack in the joint, but the water will get in there. So that's a given. Try, try as you want, at some point it's going to get in there and that, that you have to accept that fact. The other point about the water is that it can get in far, far easier than it can get out. Uh, it's, a, it's one of them annoying facts about water. It can find the, any little hole in, but it's very, very hard to get out. And once it's got in, it'll, it'll want to stay in there. So typically the route out for water is evaporation. Now, evaporation needs airflow. Now within the timber itself, there isn't really any airflow. Um, so if you didn't have a paint finish on the timber, what would happen is that the, t the water would evaporate from the surface and then the water within the timber would migrate to the surface and would evaporate that way. But chances are it's a window it's got a paint finish on it and chances are again if it's a low quality or an old um, paint finish that it's completely impervious so it won't allow moisture to evaporate through it um, again typically oil based paints are completely impervious so that they prevent any moisture passage and that sounds like such a great idea because you think I want to avoid water getting into the timber great except that as we've said at some point water will get in there it will make its way into the end grain and once it's done that your impervious paint finish is effectively just hot trapping the moisture in there and you're effectively just just creating a damp environment for it so those two things water will get in and it'll be hard for it to get out and those two things need to be considered so what we've just looked at there is that you know we've created this damp environment the timber's got wet it's staying wet and um, the more the, you know, the more it stays wet, the more that joint is opening and moving, the more the moisture is getting in. That's effectively the conditions for rot to start, and that's the you know that's the the beginning of the process that sort of leads to the end of the window effectively. So that pro and that might be twenty years, thirty years down the line, or it might be two or three years down the line, depending on the conditions, depending on the timber. I mean, you'll see all sorts of different things, but that's effectively where you know the crux of it. And that's where the problems will start at that joint and grain coming together at 90 degrees and that differential movement one other thing just um, to touch on as well and this is again to do with um, to do with the paint finish is that you know typically what you find on a traditional window or door um, they, they arrive on site with no paint finish on them and they get brush painted in in situ on site um, that's the traditional way of doing it now when you've got a window fitted or a door fitted, there are bits of it that you pretty much can't get to with a brush or they're very, very difficult to get to. And you know what? They don't get painted. Um, uh, and much as you'd like to think that people will be very thorough about it, the reality is they don't. Um, now one of the key, key areas, particularly on a door, is the underneath of a door. So that was our door underneath that bottom rail. 
very often never gets paint because it's tricky to get to. Um, now, if you think about rainwater, uh, all the water, gravity is cascading down, it's ending up at the bottom of the door. Um, it's all then going underneath the bottom of the door, which has no paint on it. It's creeping into the end grain, working its way in there. The rest of the door's got paint on it, so the water can't escape, damp environment, problems just get worse. So again, typically what you find is that the rot will start to happen at the bottom of the door as it soaks into end grain. Really, you, you, th those, those are the problems that you'll encounter with, um, with timber movement. And although everyone associates it with, oh, you know, you get a door which sticks in wet weather and you can't open it. In all honesty, those are the least of your worries. That's so easy to overcome. Oh, yes, it's annoying. But, you know, that's, that's not really the crux of um, timber stability or timber expansion. It's far more about, um, you know, how corner joints hold up and what happens to them when they don't hold up. Gonna have a look at this uh, old door. So again, this is the door we've replaced. It's fairly old. We've got big, uh, wide horizontal mid rail. We've got a big, wide horizontal bottom rail, and then there's a central mount in there. Now, just look where the points where you can see where the paint's starting to fail. It's all at those corner joints. You can see it's opened up. That's where all the paint's gone. We sort of talked about paint coatings and brittle. Um, that's a kind of great demonstration of a brittle paint coating. You, know, you can see the paint coming away at the joint there. And again, where it um, can't cope with the moisture that's coming in through the end of end grain of that, that rail. Same thing on the bottom, a really vivid example of paint not being able to cope with the stress of movement over the joints. Now these are wide rails. Again, that's, I don't know, it's probably nine inch, 225 rail there. A nice door, it's a really handsome door this actually. So don't often get an opportunity to do this, but here we can have a good look at the bottom of this door. That's never had paint on it. It's the end grain of the vertical style there with no paint on it, moisture getting sucked up into the end. Uh, and it's so often the case because it's difficult to get to, it's out of view, it just doesn't get painted. This is quite interesting because um, this is a window which was uh, once on an external wall um, there's been a conservatory built around the outside of it, so now it's become an internal window. And if you have a look down at the joint there, you can see that inward step um, indicating that the rail has shrunk. And it's shrunk because it's now indoors, um, it doesn't get wet, and it's basically dried out. So it's a really good example of how, um, you know, effectively the position in the building has an effect on how the window behaves great demonstration of what's going on so just first of all just have a look at it um, up the top there the paint's reasonably sound down the bottom there that's where it's all going just to close in on this again that join there now we see there it's starting to rot here it's starting to rot there further in you go and I'm not going to pretend it's perfect but it's a little bit more sound the further in you go but again because the um, on this piece of timber, the moisture is creeping in through the end grain, which has been opened up at that joint there. Um, also, it's working its way up through the end grain, coming in from the bottom there. So, what this is sort of demonstrating is how um, you know the moisture travels in through the end, end grain first of all. This window here faces full south, so we're expecting this one to take a lot of the weather. It's a great, great, great example. Bottom rail, you can see how it's stepped down there. So originally that would have all been lined up flush that's expanded step down so you can you can sort of tell by even though the paint's cracking this is a fairly crisp window so this this is where i was um just saying this is a much more recent window than the one we just looked at so although it looks in better condition um it's because it's been replaced more recently you can sort of tell that just by, still by the crispness of the timber that we've got here so this is this shows you a really good example of uh what eventually happens so you can see that if left that's where it just completely decays all on the end grain working its way inwards and working its way upwards but again all from that corner joint look at look at that down the bottom compare it to the top i mean those really are distinctly different just in summing up you know we talked a lot about how timber fails and there's of bored you witless or like me you got quite enthusiastic about it but either way um for me it encapsulates there are two key values here which um 
are really important to us as an organisation. And the first of those is seek answers in unexpected places. And if you do that, you can come up with some pretty radical unexpected answers. And the second value is to ask why. So always ask why. Don't do anything without asking why. Why do we do it like this? Is this the best way? Could this be improved upon? Are we just doing it like this because of tradition? Ask why. Always have a rock solid reason. And I think with those two things, that's how you move forward. That's how you improve. That's how you innovate. And those things have been absolutely key to us as an organisation right from the word go. So the next step on from this, and hopefully to talk about in another discussion, would be how we've taken all that information and all these, um, you know, looked at all the, the way Timber behaves and the way windows behave, and how we built that and incorporated that into the window design that we use. Because that's exactly how it's been, you know, arrived at. It's a process that's evolved over time, that's used information that we've seen and that we've gathered and that we've, you know, explored.